Fire friends, welcome back to Conscious Voltero. It's Francesca. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, I'm a Claire Santian Tarot reader and a Reiki healer. If you want any of my services, they're in the link in the description below. Today's video is going to be on Camila Cabello and Sean Mendes part three. As promised, I did it um, as quick as possible and the goal was to get to 500. So thank you guys so much, my star friends. So let's go ahead and get it started. I'm first going to go ahead and begin what's currently going on in their connection. Um, the last time they communicated, then I'm going to go uh, towards how Sean is thinking and feeling and then how Camila is thinking and feeling. So, okay, so this is um, pretty, pretty juicy, my friends. <laughs> okay, so I know a lot of you guys are confused, especially now because a lot of you guys are telling me that she's with Austin and holding hands with him. But rest assured, it's not what it seems, and I'm about to tell you guys. So right now, what's being affected um, in their connection is their fifth house. So I use a lot of astrology, numerology, and tarot. On the side, I have all the answers, but I just show my moonology cards because I don't want to overwhelm you guys with information that um, you wouldn't really understand. Overall, their fifth house is very fixed stated, so they're in a very fixed stated aspect in their connection, hence the Scorpio, hence why there's adjustments needed. They're overcoming a crisis, they're overcoming drama, speculation, and the um, inability to express themselves accordingly to get into this uh, stage of union. So, with that being said, um, let's get down to the last time that um um i read t for them so i did the preview i said that camila contacted his sister okay literally that weekend my friends that weekend the last weekend that sean was in la i confirmed that they physically saw each other it is confirmed that sean mendez and camila cabello saw each other in california in la it seems as though it was a saturday and it seems as though when they hung out they physically met up somewhere it seems like a home when they met up there was a lot of desire there was a lot of passion so you guys already know what that means i'm not gonna go into detail but then it quickly de-escalated to this argument so basically they went into the connection very fearful they went into meeting up with each other um, still kind of confined, a little bit uncertain, lacking direction as to where it was going to go, having faith that it was actually going to be a rejuvenation, you know what I mean? Because there was so much passion, because there was a lot of um, desire to bloom something. Sean contacted her maybe like a day or, or a few before that and then decided to meet up with her. She was all for it. However, what happens is is that when they came into it, there was this aspect of it being imbalanced. The dynamic was imbalanced. So the paradigm was Sean wanting to, you know, have the upper hand, wanting to have information on her, um, using like fear tactics um, to kind of take information out of her. Um, and then in a way he was almost like, he was, he was almost using like a lot of stonewalling and manipulation, I'm not gonna lie. Because he was being very defensive when they when they started arguing and then when he came into co contact with her, when he physically saw her. she And the reason why he was like that, okay, is because she was also not showing her true feelings. Camila was trying to put up a front, like very detached, very disconnected. She was pretending she was also kind of gaslighting him and diluting his love for him. So this made Sean kind of feel very triggered, sensitive. Then he started bringing up the competition and the other option, a.k.a. Um, Austin. So this made him go through this series of needing to stand his ground, need to, needing to defend himself, feeling as though between him and her now there was this challenge because after they had fun together, right? After the chemistry, after them going on, you know, a little, a little date, right? A meetup it quickly de-escalated because they didn't sacrifice their ego before coming in. They were still holding on to negativity. They were still holding on to the tension. They were still holding on to um, what was required to let go in order to establish something new. Because there was too much speculation. There was too much paranoia. Um, 
Sean was worrying, like worrying a lot, like to the point where it was pointless. And Camila felt obligated to give him answers, but then didn't want to like drop her guard because Sean was also having his guard up. Like it, it seems very messy. I'm not going to lie. There was a lot of distortion and a lot of assumptions coming from Sean, like very emotional, uh, very distorted assumptions. And then from Camila, there was a lot of detachment. There was a lot of, um, disillusionment there was a lot of withdrawal that kept triggering disappointment within sean that was making him kind of like make him stand his ground and maintain control so as a result the like i said the night the the time that they spent together it, it kind of digressed to the point where they fell into um into a lot of backlash. They fell into um, feelings of unable to compromise. They fell into opposition. They fell into um, they fell into a toxic argument. I'm not gonna lie. And this led to both of them um, holding a grudge. They weren't unable to release a grudge at that point as well. Sorry about that. They were unable to release a grudge. They were both not also making the effort to do it. It's like they were both bickering, trying to have the upper hand. Um, like I said, this just ended in, in Sean want, wanting to maintain control, almost having like a breakdown, not able to cope with it and wanting to protect his heart. So I do see that Sean was the one that kind of like um, what was the last one standing and, and said, yeah, I can't deal with this. Like, I, I can't deal with this if if you're going to be going around doing these things and not telling me the truth and, you know, like things like that. And Camila was like very overburdened by feeling obligated to like give Sean answers when she felt as though she was take, being taken granted for, you know, like she was being um, charmed in some way by Sean. Like there was a lot of misconceptions between them. I'm not going to lie. And, and yeah, that's, that's kind of what I see. And this ended up, um, leaving Camila feeling as though the connection's a burden, like it's, she's unable to cope with it. And it left Sean also kind of feeling as though he, need, he needs to grow and transform his life and he, he needs to move on. Rest assured, this is how they ended off, but, but watch what's going to come. Um, the end of the argument is here. And they're going to be, you know, slowly but surely transforming to trust each other um, to to move towards the requirements that are needed to uh, start a new plan. So adjustments are needing. The adjustment that's needed is for them to release the toxicity, the paranoia, the grudges, and then the negativity. So um, they can balance out their issues and hatch a whole new plan on how to actually compromise. Um, and this is going to require for both of them to be very diplomatic, you know, enter the connection without wanting to be right or wrong, no power games, no stonewalling, no manipulation, and just being vulnerable, right? And, um, and yeah, so I am seeing that there is a lot of exciting new news coming in for them. But right now there is silence, there's non-action. It seems as though both of them feel as though the connection is over. And that's why Camila has... Um, has quote unquote moved on with Austin. Yeah, I'm gonna get to that in a few. And that's why literally Sean left the next day or left LA that weekend. So yes, my friends, that's what I see. So let's go ahead and see how Sean is thinking and feeling. Okay, my star friends. So let's go ahead and see how Sean is thinking and feeling about Camila. Okay, so first I'm gonna go ahead and start off with um, why I see he canceled his tour. So um, what affected Sean during the time when he canceled his tour was his conscious mind and his inability to reason and um, lead with logic. At the time, he was too over emotional to the point where it was clouding his mind, making him have a lot of anxiety, pressure, paralyzed with fear. And his throat chakra and third eye was clogged to the point where he just couldn't perform. But this has a lot to do with his personal relationships. So I'm not trying to say that it has to do with the process of that he was going through with Camila. But it can be. I'm not going to lie. He just felt also very restricted as well. Um, he felt as though there was a lot of people waiting for him right there was a lot of people that were 
wanting to honor him, ready to celebrate, ready to, you know, join the concert and the tour. Yet internally, he felt as though the world was against him. He felt so much adversity. He felt trapped and restricted. Um, he just felt um, not really supported by the relationships that he needed. And some of it has to do with Camila. I'm not going to lie, but overall, he was just in this space that he was unable to cope with the tour. Um, and like I said, it was just affecting his conscious mind. So yeah, just to get that out of the way. Okay, my friends. So the way that uh, Sean is thinking and feeling about Camila right now is that he's actually relying right now a lot on his emotions and needing to nurture the connection. He feels very emotional right now, but he feels as though he needs to be the one to start um, something new with her. He realizes that he needs to let go of the past. He needs to let go of constantly, possibly trying to get some sort of reasoning or logic out of Camila when Camila doesn't operate out of reason or logic. She operates out of emotion. So when they did have their argument and their discussion, Sean wanted to know why was she doing this? Why was she doing that? Etc. And then he wasn't understanding that Camila was just trying to cope with the circumstances of their separation. So now Sean's mindset is changing since they haven't been talking for for a few days or a week now sean has changed his mindset and it's mainly because he also has either consulted with his mother or a group of friends maybe like a female friend that he feels as though has like mother nurturing abilities and the point is is that this person gave him really good advice about him needing to be a good listener him needing to also drop his guard when it comes to having conversations in order to reach resolutions and it's like there's this quote that's called uh well that's the way that it's uh you say it is the the least said the soonest mended so basically what that means is like i mean it's, it's clear but the the less you say right or the less you assume the less you speculate the the easier it is to come to an agreement or a resolution or to mend a connection and this is kind of like the advice that he got uh from this person and it's really helping him see that he needs to bring love into the situation he needs to be pragmatic you know he needs to be uh much more objective rather than um you know subjective or or he needs to be less leading with logic or just getting answer wanting to get answers from her and he needs to be you know, less detached from that tendency to want to maintain control or want to maintain answers when in reality, um, the reason why Camila was doing what she was doing is, is a consequence of both of their inabilities to, to compromise, right? But it was mainly due to Sean's inability to actually extend himself to Camila to go back into union. So now he's understanding it much better. He's understanding why the division, why um, the heartache. He's understanding why they had this recent upheaval, why he also feels alienated right now from her. He understands, like he's getting it, but right now he's also under a lot of fear. He's um, having sleepless nights. He's thinking worst case scenarios, especially due to what he's seen online. It's making him feel extremely insecure. Uh, it's it's kind of making him feel like he's not good enough as well. I'm not going to lie. It's making him feel very anxious. Um, it's making him feel like he needs to keep himself occupied. But he's also spending time with friends, but he's also spending time alone, problem solving. He's... He's going into um, his self-introspective mode so he could actually focus on his shadow, focus on why the shadow tends to exacerbate um, or accelerate um, arguments when they're not needed. He's focusing on his sadness and how to fix his wounds. Um, I'm also seeing that he's also looking at the competition Okay, he's looking at the competition, seeing who Camila's dealing with, and he's realizing that this is a, a consequence of his inaction in the past. So instead of bickering with her, or instead of in a way holding a grudge, 
um he's he's actually going into this stage of um of enlightenment where he's now realizing that he kind of trapped their connection in into this because there was lack of movement so right now sean um is disconnecting from his recent perspective and now he's gaining uh clarity as to why things are the way they are and he's getting um vital knowledge on how to inform himself on how to release the restrictions within his mentality release the limitations and how he can actually have a clear direction clear direction on how to navigate the situation with camila so he's sacrificing a lot of conditioning sean is sacrificing a lot of his tendencies which can be very discerning you know sean can be someone that leads with a lot of like clinical thoughts or like he's very um ethical you know he has a lot of morals but yet he also needs to understand that the structure of their connection was uh dismantled you know it was ruined so he needs to understand that he needs to lead with with rationality rather than being irrational um and so he's sacrificing like i said um from the current disappointments that he has uh, from the impulsiveness that he has to also repeat ne negative patterns with Camila. And um, he's going from being apathetic to now having empathy and being able to understand her. Okay. Yet he also is putting up a front right now. He's having a mask. He's not showing his true feelings. He's pretending. Okay. He's also at a point where he is kind of gaslighting the situation because he feels a lot of pain right now. He's going through a lot of heartache, but then he's also going through this revelation where he's actually realizing where he went wrong, realizing how, you know, he kind of made a fool um, out of himself with Camila. So he's he's still this happened, my friends, because he both of them were still needing to go through an awakening. But specifically, Sean, he needed to go through um, a phase where he needed to understand the complications that he put the connection through. So this argument that they had forced Sean to go through a mental in prison. It locked him down mentally so he could awaken more. You know, this was divinely orchestrated in other words. So he could problem solve. So he can get rid of the fear. So he can be less avoidant. So he can get rid of his uh, passive dismissive avoidant tendencies. But right now there's excessive worry, there's sleepless nights, he's in fight or flight, he's in survival. So all he could really do right now is kind of watch her. I am not, I'm not going to lie, he's spying, he's um, implying things online. There's a lot of stalking and there's a lot of obsession, a lot of obsession. There's a lot of thinking in the mind. There's a lot of fixation as well as wanting to kind of get together again, but kind of have like a, re a renewal, kind of redo things, you know? So even though there's a lot of anxiety, panic, and there's a lot of things going on with Sean right now, he is planning on um, on savoring the moment with her, um, creating an unexpected visit. Um, I do feel like it's going to be in the month of August. And um, he does feel as though time's running out as well. Like he's on an urgency. Uh, there's like a deadline as well for him. So he's on an urgency. Um, he's on this kind of like this high so i am seeing that this adrenaline that he feels as though he needs to spontaneously show up visit her or talk with her um or cut the the silence um this may happen around the full moon okay guys um or it, it will happen shortly after that but i am seeing something around the 11th um so i'm just throwing that out there um but right now um all he could really do is just feel the apathy, feel the regret, <laughs> feel the regret, feeling like he should have done things differently, especially when it came to the communication. He also felt like a little bit like he was like being self-absorbed, like only focused about like how he felt or what he thought or what other people thought rather than like how she found how she's coping with the situation. So, so yeah, so he's, he's seen things from a broader perspective and now he's actually tapping into their soul agreement, their soul contract and doing the shadow work and doing a lot more investigation within him. But he's still wanting to get to this next phase of the relationship and nothing's really gonna stop him because 
you know, he knows that they're fated. He knows that they're they're a perfect fit, and she has the key to his heart. And um, even though she's a he's aware that what she just did was revenge and payback, like she, he feels as though she retaliated on him right now with this Austin guy. Um, this is not gonna stop him, even though it it is making him feel a lot of um, fight or flight energy, like excessive worrying and stalling even though he's currently running, it's not going to stop him from spontaneously contacting her and trying to meet up with her and trying to uh, fix the situation. Um, because he wants a deeper commitment and um, he does feel as though time's running out. So, so my friends, so let's go ahead and see how Camila is feeling. Okay, star friends, so let's go ahead and move towards how Camila is thinking and feeling about Sean and the connection. So basically right now she's focusing a lot on her values, her self-worth, um, how that was in that with, by Sean and um, you know she's going through a lot of like heartache as well she's also going through like a sudden change where there was like this shocking transformation that happened within her um, she is actually going through a powerful ascension phase where she's actually releasing any any codependency uh, they both uh, Sean and Camila both base their self-worth on the status of this connection that's why things are very um imbalanced or let's just say perplexing or confusing at the moment in their lives or between them um as you guys um tell me because like i said i don't do research on these celebrities um it's it's not something that i'm into but you guys uh, message me all this information so it's pretty cool um however she is letting go of feeling suffocated by the turmoil of this connection right now so she's actually stepping into her north node into her potential which is actually helping her um get rid of any imbalances when it came to her career um also when it came to the possession with sean she's also at a space where she's focusing on her talent and her social privilege social privileges and her cultural background but then she's also focusing on um, her feelings and her self-worth with with sean and in the connection right now there is a silent treatment as i said there has been abandonment of communication um but right now it's like she kind of has ghosted him they have both ghosted each other but she's like pretending everything that you see that camilla is doing it's it's a facade right now camilla is pretending um i'm not saying that she's living beyond her means because you know she is very successful but emotionally she may be doing so so i'll get to that in a few because that has a lot to do with her in austin <laughs> um but overall what camila is going through right now and the way that she feels about uh, sean is that you know she's going through a lot of needing to let go in order to love herself needing to learn the lessons and release resentment in order to love him in the near future She's going through a lot of fleeting, a lot of triggers, a lot of turmoil, but then she's also expanding herself by learning about her patterns, right? And then instead of feeling stuck, right, or allowing the, the toxicity of their, you know, unhealthy attachments get to her, she's actually releasing them. You know, she's stopping the pattern of abandoning herself, of abandoning the connection. So I also feel as though Camila does feel a necessity to actually reach out and 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 kind of like make some sort of amend here but instead she's um she's retaliating and this can be a pattern of hers um or this is the way that she feels that she needs to cope with it because she feels very uh stabbed in the back she she feels um very um in a way she does feel rejected but she also feels like very um you know remorseful she feels very apathetic she feels as though sean didn't really fully receive her offer but then she's understanding why he didn't receive the offer but then she's also understanding that he felt betrayed by her decision to deal with other people and then it's like she right now she's operating in the sense where she's operating out of vanity okay and now she's realizing that she needs to let go of operating in vanity. 
So she's gonna be making a firm decision to just focus on herself. And she may also go through a makeover in some sort of way. She's going through a tough lesson as well when it comes to needing to not uh, fall into temptation and needing to be her true self. She has avoided her shadow work for a while. I'm not going to lie. And now she's realizing that she's kind of been stuck and she has been coping with the sadness of this connection, right? And the codependency of this connection um, in a way that was unhealthy, you know, because she, she tried to play mind games or she tried to, she fell into deep depression, you know, like it, th there was never a point where she was dealing with, with it in a healthy manner. And even when she was, uh, there was still a lot of obsession. So what I'm seeing now is that Camila is actually stopping the patterns, okay? And this is making her go through tough lessons. Make It's making her get out of her comfort zone. It's making her, um, you know, focus on where she was stuck, how she was potentially making this connection stuck as well. So she's taking accountability. I'm not going to lie. And she's very optimistic for what's to come, especially because she's going to be making this decision. Um, but she's stopping, stopping her programming and her conditioning of falling into these uh, patterns of numbing the situation falling into temptation um avoiding the shadow work avoiding the the inner work that's needed in order to actually heal herself so her and sean can actually get to to a space where they're able to mend right so they both had issues that they both needed to heal that's why they fell back into this um but rest assured it was divinely orchestrated Okay, right now she does feel as though she has had a rude awakening. She has gone through a shattering of perspective. This is a blessing in disguise though, my friends. And this is an end of an old era where, you know, she's realizing that she's needing to be um, more pure hearted. She, she, she needs to be less naive <laughs> um, and she needs to have her heart in the right place uh, so she can trust Sean and so Sean can trust her. And she's she's in a space where she's feeling a little bit close trapped frustrated due to you know the no communication but as i said she's expanding herself and she's waiting she's waiting on sean again <laughs> but she's also at a space where she is willing to bring an offer to the table so she's waiting for an offer to be brought onto the table but she's also willing to bring an offer to the table to get together so they're both mirroring each other in the sense where they want to bring an offer to the table, just kind of like get things moving because she also is wanting commitment. So they're both mirroring each other a lot, both mirroring each other a lot. You know, she's also wanting commitment. She's also wanting this everlasting love. You know, now that she's bringing herself into this equilibrium, now they're both going to be able to complement each other. But she's now seeing that she has to open her heart um, and she has to let go of these patterns so he can open his heart to her as well and really get together in a space where it's welcoming. So she's seen how um, they didn't manage their conversations properly, how they didn't manage things properly. Um, she's going through a lot of anxiety as well. She's going through a lot of the same things that Sean is going through. I'm not gonna lie, a lot of lack of fulfillment, but she's doing it by numbing. And how is she numbing it is with Austin. And I'm about to tell you guys, this thing with Austin is not real, okay? It has to do with Mars energy and Mars has all to do with lust desire and sex literally so yes there is a happiness there's a smile that you see but literally the the energy revolving around her in austin is literally around social media it's literally around her making a secret like compromise okay with uh austin this this may not even be something that austin is aware of though but it's like she knows that Austin is chasing her. Austin is chasing Camila, okay? She knows that she she doesn't really trust him. She feels as though Austin is a, is a player as well. So she wouldn't consider him as a partner in the first place, okay? The dynamic is uh, one-sided in the sense where the love is unrequited. There's no love, okay? But what there is, is is major sex. Like there's major lust. There's major compatibility on a personality level, okay? But it's one-sided, okay? He's love-bombing her. She's receiving it for vanity, okay? That's why I say she's leading with vanity. And she's about to stop this pattern. But there is a 
major emphasis on social media, okay? Camila's not stupid, okay? Camila knows that people are constantly watching her, okay? Camila knows that if she were to go around, okay, lingering with a guy that's chasing her, okay, going with the thrill, okay, because Camila's right now, and in the recent past, she's been on adrenaline rush, okay? She's been on this adrenaline rush, and she knows that this was all going to be exposed that would make Sean go through this um, this feeling of needing to uh, beg for her. And that's exactly what she wanted, okay? So her master plan was literally that, and that's what she's doing. And now that they had this recent argument, she has retaliated by allowing Austin to chase her and accepting um, his proposal, and she's making it evident by allowing herself to be exposed in the public so it can be seen on social media. She wants it to be seen. But now she's going through a phase where she's saying, hey, wait a second. I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't be gaslighting him. Because she knows he's watching. But she's changing her perspective now. She's tapping into her north node. She's being fair. She's seen how her attitude towards their situation, okay, has, has distorted and has made things worse than they needed to. So she's also understanding Sean's perspective and she's learning and she's transcending these obstacles by also expanding her, her, her point of view. So guys you have to understand that not everything is as it seems i mean in reality this world that we live in okay let's get a little bit deep now okay not only celebrity readings okay <laughs> reality is not what it seems my friends nothing is what it seems in fact we we do live in in a simulation what we experience in this lifetime is literally a projection it's a hologram of our of our consciousness Okay, but to not get so esoteric or mystical, what I'm trying to say is that you can't believe everything you see, especially on the internet. On the internet, things are literally orchestrated and designed to, to, to make you believe something that maybe is necessarily true. So understand that Camila's decision, okay, with Austin is going to be to end this. Okay, she's going to transition now. She's going to liberate herself from this and she's going to she's going to begin to avoid him, you know? And it may be that she may use manipulation tactics to get out of the situation. But um she's going to do it. And it may may take a few days, may take a few weeks, but that's what I see happening. Because she's stepping into her uh, purpose. She's stepping into her into her north node, and this is also making her go through an ascension process to go towards union. That's why she's gonna be focusing more on herself. She's growing, guys. She's going through changes. So understand that you just cannot believe everything you see, okay? And I know you guys are you guys are crazy fans of these people, and that's cool and all. But you guys you guys don't want to be radical in anything, like you know. You guys gotta chill. You know what I mean? Like, that's why I do these updates every so, every so few weeks. You know, because, um, you know, the energy needs to transpire. But also, you know, you guys can't be so uh, fixated on on these celebrities. And and that's cool. You know, everyone has their their thing that they like. You know what I mean? Um, and I and I like how a lot of you guys are like investigators. You guys like investigate things and like you know um connect the dots okay that's really cool but yet you don't want to get overwhelmed with um excuse me you don't want to get overwhelmed with the information because all that really is going to do is create you into someone that is extreme and radical and anything to the excess is not good for you and I'm just saying that out of like my heart because I see a lot of you guys like you guys literally message me like every day on Instagram <laughs> and that's cool. You know, I'll answer. But it's like you have to understand where you have to like um, where you have to draw a line with yourself, you know, because I'm nice. You know, I will answer. Um, and even if I don't, I'm, I'm still nice. 
but you have to draw a line with yourself like you don't want to get excessive but anyways my star friend so that's about it for now if you want a personal reading you can go to consciouswotero.com i also have new services i have guided meditation sound healing and guided breath work and if you also want a reiki healing for your relationship or just a personal reiki healing that can help you in your healing process you can go to my website or click on the link in the description below catch me on instagram as well take care bye star friends